Good evening, this is Mr. Winter Mallet. In this video, we are going to learn about monohybrid crosses. Do not be worried by this bombastic word. It is just a fancy way of saying matching allele with another allele. So by the end of this lesson, you should be able to predict result from simple genetic crosses as well as use genetic diagram to solve problem involving monohybrid inheritance. But first, let us look at this beautiful human being. So who is this sexy fellow? His name is Gregor Mendel. And his occupation was a monk. And his hobby was growing peas. So Gregor Mendel is actually very important for the understanding of genetics because during his time, because during his time he grew a lot of pea and used them for some observational study. So let us take a look at his experiment. So as mentioned, Mendel's hobby is growing peas. So he have a lot of pea hanging around. So he thought, why not I go and breed them and see what are the results? So it turns out, pea actually have two different colors. Yellow color pea and green color pea. So what Mendel did was, he took some pure breed yellow color pea and some pure breed green color pea. Pure breed is a fancy way of saying that they are homozygous. But of course during that time, we do not know what is homologous chromosome as well as homozygous. So we call them pure breed. So how do we get pure breed peas? Pure breed peas actually comes from cell fertilization. So imagine you have this plant that produces yellow pea. You self fertilize it for many generations and you observe that all the offspring have yellow color pea. So those are the pure breed yellow pea. You find a plant that produces green pea, self-fertilize it for many generations and observe that, oh, all the offspring actually produce green pea. So those green pea are the pure red green pea. So pure breed is actually a fancy way of saying they are homozygous. So pure breed is actually a fancy way of saying they are homozygous. They have the same alleles, whether it's dominant or whether it is recessive. So as I was saying, he took the flower of this pure breed yellow pea and crossed it with the flower of this pure breed green pea. And make a guess what is the result. So what he found is really very interesting. It turns out that none of the offspring actually produces green pea. So the first generation of offspring, we call it the F1 generation. And none of the F1 generation have green color seed or pea. So none of the pea in the F1 generation are actually green color. It is as though as the green color trait disappeared. But what is more interesting is, for the second experiment, what he did was he self-fertilized all the F1 generation and observe the color of the seed that was produced. And it turns out that in the F2 generation, the green color pea or green color seed actually came back. So what happened was 6022 plant of the F2 generation actually produces yellow color pea, while 2001 of the F2 generation plant produces green color pea. And it is not just one experiment that he ran. In fact, he ran the experiment for many other traits. Beside the color of seed, he also investigated on the appearance of the seed, the color of the flower, as well as pea plant that have long stem, as well as short stem. So he went to cross the pure breed plant of each trait with the pure breed plant of the other trait. And what happened was very consistent. All the F1 generation, they only show one kind of traits. For the seed color, it is yellow color. 
for the appearance. All the seeds are round instead of wrinkle. For the flower, all of them are purple. And for the height of stem, all of them were long or tall. So what he did was he called this trait the dominant trait. As for the F2 generation, we can see that the recessive trait actually came back. So the recessive trait only returned in the second generation of the offspring. And if we look at the ratio of the F2 generation, we can also see something that is very interesting. If you look at it closely, you can see that the ratio of the dominant trait is to the ratio of the recessive trait is somewhat close to 3 is to 1. And he did not just perform his experiment on these four traits. He performed his experiment on more than these four traits, a lot more. And all of his experiment, the F2 generation ratio of dominant is to recessive is very close to 3 is to 1. Why is this the case? What I have down here are some plaster scene. So I will need all of you to have some imagination. Imagine that they are cells that will be dividing into your sex gametes. Not your sex gamete per se, but the sex gametes of the pea plant. Be it the pollen grain or the egg. So this is one cell, and these cells contains the alleles that will produce the yellow color pea or yellow color seed. While these cells contains the alleles that will produce the green color pea. Both of them are homozygous because you can see both the alleles, they are yellow color. This one, both the alleles, they are green color. So what will happen is meiosis will take place. So meiosis 1, then meiosis 2. And we will get 4 daughter cell as the end result of meiosis. Same thing for the green color cell, meiosis 1, then meiosis 2, giving us 4 daughter cell. So we can see that for the yellow color cell, all the daughter cell will contain the alleles that will code for the traits for yellow color P. Well, for this, all the daughter cell contains the alleles that codes for the green color P. What will happen next will be fertilization. And to keep things simple, I have removed half the gametes that contains the sister chromatids to those that I have kept. So imagine you are these gametes, the yellow gametes. You can either fertilize these gametes that contains the green allele or these gametes that also contains the green allele. So if you choose the first option, you will get a cell that contains the yellow alleles as well as the green alleles. If you choose the second gametes, same thing. You will get a cell with the yellow alleles and the green alleles. For the second yellow cell, the choice is the same. It can either fertilize these gametes or these gametes. If it's choose the first choice, it will produce a cell that contains the yellow alleles and the green alleles. If it's the second choice, it will also produce a cell that contains the yellow alleles and the green alleles. And this is why the F1 generation between a homozygous and a homozygous will give rise to all the offspring that are heterozygous. And because yellow color is the dominant traits, 
So all the offspring will be yellow in color, even though they have the recessive alleles, because recessive alleles will not show its phenotype in a heterozygous scenario. So this is the genotype of all the F1 generation, all the offspring. All of them will contain one yellow allele, and all of them will also carry one green allele. So now let's check out the end result of meiosis. So meiosis 1, then meiosis 2. So after meiosis, you should be able to observe that 50% of the gametes contains the yellow alleles, while 50% of the gametes contains the green alleles. So 50% of the gametes will be yellow, 50% will be green. So let us check out the end result of cell fertilization or even cross-pollination with heterozygous individual. Now I need you to listen carefully to the setup or the layout. Over on the left are all the male gametes or the pollen grade. Over on the right are all the female gametes or the ovules. So I have two questions. Can these gametes fertilize these gametes? No, cannot because pollen grain cannot fertilize pollen grain. Second question, can the setup be like this? Cannot, because 50% of the gametes must contain the yellow alleles, while the other 50% must contain the green alleles. So with that out of the way, Imagine if you are these gametes that contains the yellow alleles, you can either fertilize these gametes that contains the yellow alleles or these gametes that contains the green alleles. If your choice is the former, the resulting cell will contain two copies of the yellow alleles. It will be homozygous. If the choice is the gametes with the green alleles, what we will get is a heterozygous offspring that contains one copy of the yellow alleles and one copy of the green alleles. If you are this green gametes or this gametes that contains the green alleles, you can also fertilize a gametes that contains the yellow alleles or a gametes that contains the green alleles. If the choice is the former, we will end up with a heterozygous offspring that contains one copy of the yellow alleles and one copy of the green alleles. And if the choice of these gametes is another gametes that contains the green alleles, we will get a homozygous offspring that contains two copies of the green alleles. So in the end, this is what we will get. So three of the offspring or three quarter of the offspring will contain a copy of the dominant alleles. So 1, 2, 3 or 75% of the offspring will be yellow color P or will produce yellow color P while 25% or 1 quarter will produce the green color P because it is a recessive phenotype. So the ratio of yellow color P to the ratio of green color P will be 3 is to 1 when we allow the F1 generation to self-fertilize or to cross-fertilize between the F1 generation.
now that you have learned why the ratio is 3 is to 1, we can learn how to represent them in words. To do this, we need to learn how to draw a Punnett square or a genetic diagram for monohybrid inheritance. Monohybrid inheritance is inheritance that involve only one pair of traits. If you go further, you will learn inheritance that involve more than one pair of traits. So for your secondary school, we are just concerned with one trait. So let's start with learning how to draw a Punnett square and using the example of the P color that we have just learned. So a Punnett square will be a table that is like this. We have one parent on top and one parent on the side. So the yellow color P, they will actually produce the Y and Y alleles in the gametes. So this Y come from this and this Y come from this. For the green color P, they will have the small letter Y and small letter Y. So this big Y sex gamete can fertilize this small Y sex gametes. And we will get this genotype. These Y gametes can also fertilize these small Y gametes. The same thing applies to these large Y gametes. It can fertilize these small Y gametes. Or these big Y gametes can fertilize these small Y gametes. So in the end, what we will end up is this. The F1 generation, all the genotype will be capital Y and small letter Y, so they are heterozygous. The phenotype will be all yellow color P because all the offspring will contain a dominant gene. And because the F1 generation is all yellow in color, we say that the yellow color is the dominant trait. But just take note, we discover that the trait is dominant first before we assign whether they are the capital letter or the small letter. Next, let's do a cross of the F1 generation. So F1 generation, let's self-fertilize them. So what gametes will this yellow P have? It will have the big Y alleles and one small Y alleles. The other sex organ will produce gametes that have the big Y alleles and the other 50% will have the small Y alleles. So it is possible for these gametes to fertilize these gametes. So the offspring will have the genotype of capital Y and capital Y. These gametes can also fertilize a gametes with recessive alleles. So I will have a capital Y and a small letter Y here. These recessive gametes can fertilize this dominant alleles. So I will have a small letter Y and a capital Y. These gametes with recessive alleles can also fertilize another gametes with recessive alleles. And the end result is I will have an offspring with two recessive alleles. So in the end, the F2 generation, I will have both yellow and green offspring. The phenotype of three quarter of them will be yellow because three quarter of them would contain the dominant allele, while one quarter of them will be homozygous recessive, containing both the recessive genes. So the ratio of yellow color P to green color P in the F2 generation will be 3 is to 1. Now that you have learned how to draw a Punnett square, let's have some practice.
So for practice one, let's try to do a punnet square for the color of flower. Purple is the dominant trait. Use capital P for the alleles for purple and small letter P for the white alleles. Draw a punnet square of crosses between a pure breed purple flower and a pure breed white flower. Pause the video and draw the punnet square. As well as list what is the genotype of all the offspring and their phenotype. Now, I trust that you have attempted the punnet square. So let us check the answer. So your answer should be like this. Please check. It is very similar to the previous example that I have demonstrated. While the genotype will be all big P and small P heterozygous, and the phenotype is all of them will be purple color flower. Next, I would like all of you to try a cross of the cell fertilization of the F1 generation. The genotype is big P and small p. So pause the video and give it a shot. So now I trust that you have done the punnet square and this should be your answer. So from the cross, you should see that three quarter of the phenotype will be purple while only one quarter will be white. So the ratio of purple is to white flower will be 3 is to 1. So from this, you should be able to see that why self-fertilization is a form of sexual reproduction because the offspring is actually dissimilar to the parents. The parents can have purple flower, but the offspring can have white flower. For the second planet square practice, let's try to do for the traits of the height of the plant. Tall is the dominant trait. So use the capital T for tall traits and small letter T for the small alleles. Draw a punnet square of the cross between a homologous tall plant with a short plant, as well as a heterozygous tall plant with a short plant. I would also like you to include the phenotype as well as the ratio of tall is to short plant in the F1 generation. So pause the video and try it out. But you might be thinking, hey, how come for the tall plant, you mentioned about it being homozygous and heterozygous? What about the short parents? Why don't you point out whether it is homozygous or heterozygous. Just think about it. Can a short plant be heterozygous? So this will be the hint that I will give to you. So pause the video and try the cross yourself. Now, I trust that you have attempted the question. So let us take a look at part A, where we cross the homozygous tall plant with the short plant. So the alleles on the gametes of the parents will be as such. Homozygous, that means both the alleles are the same, capital T and capital T. For short plant, because it's a recessive trait, they must be homozygous. So small letter T, small letter T. And the genotype of all the offspring will be the same, capital T and small letter T. So their phenotype will be, all of them will be tall. As for part B, when we cross a heterozygous tall plant with a short plant, the alleles on the gametes will be as such, and this will be the cross result. So from the result, you should be able to see that 50% of the offspring will contain the dominant allele, while 50% of the offspring will be homozygous recessive. That means they contain two recessive genes. 
So as a result, the ratio of tall is to short plant in the F1 generation will be 1 is to 1. So this is all for Punnett square. It is very easy. But the thing is, for pure science, I have never seen them requiring you to draw a Punnett square per se in paper 2. You can definitely use it for paper 1. But for paper 2 of pure science, what they normally ask you to draw is a genetic diagram. So how do we draw a genetic diagram? Now, genetic diagram is actually just a more complicated Punnett square. Which is why I wouldn't advise you to draw a genetic diagram for your paper 1. If you want to do some calculation, just use Punnett square for paper 1. Paper 2, they can force you to draw a genetic diagram. But the good thing is, most of the time, they will give you a template that looks like this, and you will just have to fill in the blank. So let us learn how to draw a genetic diagram using the example of the color of the P. For the yellow color P, they will have two dominant alleles, while the green color P, they will have two small alleles for their genotype. So after meiosis, the alleles will be in different gametes. Same thing for the green pea. After meiosis, the alleles will be in different gametes. So the first dominant alleles, right? It can pair up with this recessive alleles and the offspring will have the genotype of capital Y and small letter Y. It is also possible for these gametes to fertilize these recessive alleles. So we will have another big Y, small Y. Same thing for this dominant alleles. It can pair up with either the first recessive alleles or it can pair up with these recessive alleles. So for the F1 generation, all of them will have the same genotype. Therefore, all the phenotype will be the same. So the F1 phenotype will be yellow, 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 and yellow. So 100% of the offspring will be yellow. This is the same result as our Punnett square. Which is why I said, for your MCQ, just draw a Punnett square instead of a genetic diagram. But you will need to know how to draw a genetic diagram for paper 2. So now that we have done F1 generation, let's proceed to the F2 generation. The genotype of the parents is capital Y and small letter Y, capital Y and small letter Y. And the resultant gametes, one will have the dominant alleles, one will have the recessive alleles. Same thing for the other parents or the other sex organ. 50% of the gametes will have the dominant allele. 50% will have the recessive alleles. So these dominant alleles, it can pair up with these dominant alleles and the resulting offspring will be homozygous dominant. It can also pair up with these recessive alleles to give an offspring that is heterozygous. These recessive alleles, it can fertilize the dominant alleles. 
gametes of this recessive alleles can fertilize the gametes of this dominant allele. And we will have heterozygous. And these recessive alleles can also pair up with these recessive alleles and the offspring will be homozygous recessive. As for the phenotype, having two dominant alleles will obviously give you yellow color P. One dominant allele will also result in yellow color P. while having two recessive alleles will result in the offspring being green in color because that is the recessive phenotype. So the ratio of yellow color P is to green color P will be 3 is to 1. So this is how you do a genetic diagram. So if you have copied this down, it is time for some practice. So for the first practice, let's do the color of flower. Again, the format will most of the time be given to you. So you just have to fill in the genotype of parents. What gametes will the parents give? For the gametes, please ensure that there is only one letter. The genotype of the F1 generation, which will have two alleles. So remember, if you see genotype of parents and genotype of the F1 generation, if you see genotype, you must have two alleles or two letters. As for gametes, it is haploid. So for gametes, you always only have one alleles or one letter. Then for the phenotype, it is the description of the appearance, either purple or white. So please pause the video and try it out. And if you are done, here is the answer. So all the offspring will be purple. Surprise! Now let's do the genetic diagram for the F2 generation. The phenotype of the parents are heterozygous purple. Then fill in the blank as well as write the ratio of purple is to white flower. Pause the video and try it out yourself. And you should get this. Three quarter of the offspring will produce purple flower, while one quarter will produce white flower. So the ratio will be 3 is to 1. For the next practice, let's draw the genetic diagram of a cross between a heterozygous tall plant and a short plant. So pause the video and try it out yourself. And remember to include the ratio of tall offspring is to short offspring. So pause the video and try it out yourself. And if you are done, here is the answer for you to check. And the ratio of tall plant is to short plant is 1 is to 1. So this will be all for the practice of Punnett square and genetic diagram. But before we go off, let's look at two more examples. First, it will be albinism or albino. This might not be foreign to you. So albinism is the lack of black pigment. You might see some guy or person that have all white hair, but he's young and his pupil is red in color because his body have the issue of producing the black pigment. So for albinism, it is caused by recessive alleles. And I would like you to try out identifying the phenotype based on the genotype. So if a person has two dominant alleles, he or she will be normal. Heterozygous individual, they will also be normal. 
but for a person that have two recessive alleles, he or she will be albino because because his or her cell, because his or her cell have issue producing the protein that is responsible for the black pigment. The next example is Huntington disease. I have mentioned this before. It is caused by a dominant allele. So please try out and see whether you can fill in the correct phenotype. For someone with two dominant alleles, he or she will be suffering from Huntington disease. Heterozygous will also be a patient because this disease is caused by a dominant allele. But luckily for most of us, we have two recessive alleles. So we are quote unquote normal or we do not have this disease. So this short practice is to help you to identify the phenotype given the genotype. So this will only be the first part of a two-part lesson on genetic diagram. So please make sure you watch the second part of the lesson on genetic diagram.